What's up YouTube, Saf here on Super Saf TV and this is my hands-on comparison of the iPhone 5S to the Samsung Galaxy S4. These are two of the most popular devices of 2013. They're also the flagships of their manufacturers. How do they compare? What's different? Well, do hit that thumbs up button and let's find out. So starting off with the biggest physical difference, the size, the iPhone 5S is quite a bit smaller than the Samsung Galaxy S4, 12.8 millimeters in terms of height, 11.2 millimeters in width, and just 0.3 millimeters in terms of thickness. It's also 18 grams lighter. Now this is because the iPhone 5S is a smaller in terms of the screen size as well, four inches versus the five inch screen of the Samsung Galaxy S4. Now resolution, the Samsung Galaxy S4 has a full HD display, 1920 by 1080 pixel resolution, 441 ppi, very high pixel density. The iPhone 5S has a 1136 by 640 pixel resolution. So that's the same as the iPhone 5 and that's 326 ppi. Now I would have liked to have seen at least a 720p display on the iPhone 5S, but it is slightly smaller than that. And that's because they wanted to keep the apps consistent from previous versions. Now, although the iPhone 5S is more compact and easier to use with one hand, consuming media, so watching videos, browsing the web, etc., is a lot more comfortable on the S4. Now the difference in PPI isn't too noticeable at a distance, but if you do bring the devices up close, you'll notice that the S4 is a tad sharper. And the HD resolution of the Samsung Galaxy S4 means that pixel for pixel HD videos will be looking that much better. Now the build, the iPhone 5S has that premium aluminum unibody design. It's available in the silver, the space gray, and also the new gold version. The Samsung Galaxy S4 comes in the polycarbonate casing with the hyperglaze finish, so that glossy material. It comes in the black mist and the white frost, and there's some other limited versions available as well. The red is one to mention, and there's also a gold version that's going to be coming up for the Middle Eastern market, and I'll let you figure out where they got the idea of that from. So the iPhone 5S definitely looks and feels more premium because of the aluminium design. However, the plastic build of the S4 allows for a removable back, which we'll be talking about a little bit later. Now the specs, the Samsung Galaxy S4 has a quad-core 1.9 GHz processor with 2 GB of RAM. There is also an octa-core version available which has 8 cores. The iPhone 5S has the Apple A7 a dual-core 1.3 GHz processor and it's a 64-bit processor, the first smartphone with 64-bit technology and it has 1 GB of RAM. There is also an M7 co-processor which measures motion data from the accelerometer, the gyroscope and the compass. Now, although the S4 does seem a lot better on paper, in terms of benchmarks, the iPhone does come up on top and load speeds in terms of loading up apps was a little bit faster on the iPhone 5S I found. And I think that's down to the fact that Apple creates both the hardware and the software. So as you can imagine, they work really well together. But in terms of day-to-day -day usage, I don't think you're gonna be noticing a massive difference in terms of performance. Now, internal memory, you've got the same versions available, 16, 32, and 64 gigabyte versions, but the S4 does have expandable storage, 64 gigabytes via micro SD card. This is something that the 5S does not offer. So an advantage here on the S4 of expandable memory. The S4 also uses a micro SIM card, whereas the iPhone 5S uses a nano SIM card. So if you are thinking of going for the iPhone 5S, do make sure that you have a nano SIM prepared. Now the cameras, the S4 has a 13 megapixel rear facing camera, the iPhone 5S has an 8 megapixel rear facing camera. Now the full comparison of the cameras, both the front and back video as well as images is on the channel, the link will be in the description below. So do go ahead and check that out for an in-depth detailed comparison. But overall I'd say both produce very nice images with lots of color and detail. The S4 I would say overall does have a little bit more detail and sharpness because of that high resolution. And initially I thought the iPhone 5S did perform better in low light, but the S4 with the auto night mode on does do a pretty good job too. The auto night mode on the S4 basically uses a slower shutter speed, which I believe the iPhone 5S does as well because the images on the iPhone 5S in low light did look better than the video in low light on the iPhone 5S. The camera interface on the iPhone 5S is very nice and clean and you've got features like square mode which I really like for Instagram and you've got some new filters on there as well. The S4 packs a bunch of features, you've got so many on there, most of which you may not even use. You've got pictures with sound, drama shot, dual camera to mention a few, dual camera is quite nice and unique so you can use both the front and rear facing cameras at the same time. The iPhone 5S does have the true tone flash though, so that's a dual LED flash, one amber, one white. Now these fire off in different combinations to give you more neutral tones and I did like this quite a bit compared to the single LED flash 
of the Samsung Galaxy S4. Video, both of these do 1080p at 30 frames a second, but the iPhone 5S does do 720p at 120 frames a second, which is great for slow motion. I really did like this feature, and it's very, very easy to use and has been implemented really well. You can simply make a full video of slow motion or just select a part, and it's quite fun to use. Front-facing cameras, the Samsung Galaxy S4 has a 2 megapixel front-facing camera with 1080p video recording. The iPhone 5S, a 1.2 megapixel camera with just 720p. Now, I would have liked to have seen 1080p on the iPhone 5S as well, but it's not here. Now, in terms of the sound recorded on video, the iPhone 5S still records in mono, so a single channel of audio, compared to the stereo sound on the Samsung Galaxy S4 with dual channels of audio. So I did find that the S4 had more rich and louder sound. You can see these again in the comparison, the full in-depth comparison, a link of which will be in the description below. The S4 uses a micro USB cable, so it'll work with other devices from other manufacturers as well. The iPhone 5S has the lightning connector, which is proprietary. In terms of connectivity, the S4 has NFC, and it's also got the IR blaster. Now this is really useful for controlling your television and other infrared devices. The iPhone 5S doesn't have NFC or an IR blaster. Now operating systems, you've got Android versus iOS. The Samsung Galaxy S4 comes with Android Jelly Bean version 4.2.2 with the TouchWiz UI. The iPhone 5S comes with iOS 7. Now, generally speaking, iOS is considered a little bit more simple and straightforward, whereas Android has a lot more customization and you can really personalize the device the way you like but it does come down to personal preference, so I'm not gonna go into a war here. To mention some of the features that I like on TouchWiz, the custom quick settings I really like, so you can prioritize your quick settings that you want to the front. Multi-window is another feature that I really like and is quite unique to the Samsung devices. You can open two apps at the same time and use them simultaneously. Now the disadvantage with TouchWiz is that you're not gonna be getting the latest updates directly from Google for Android. You're gonna have to wait till they go through Samsung unless you've got the Google Play edition of the Samsung Galaxy S4. With the iPhone 5S across the board, you're gonna be getting the latest updates directly from Apple almost as soon as they come out. Now in terms of security, the iPhone 5S does come with Touch ID. Now this is a key feature, it's a fingerprint scanner on the home button and you can use it to unlock the device as well as purchase apps in the App Store. It's very quick and easy to use and it works really well. And yes, it's not the first time we've seen this. We have seen this in the past on something like the Motorola Atrix a few years ago, but it's been implemented and integrated really well here. You can scan your finger at any angle and it's very easy to set up and you can set up up to five fingers. The S4 does offer a few alternatives. So you've got face unlock, pattern unlock, voice with face unlock. There's lots of options here, but nothing like the touch ID on the iPhone 5S. Now touching on some of the additional features that these devices offer, the Samsung Galaxy S4 does come with smart scroll, smart pause, and smart stay. Now these use the front facing camera of the device to see where your head is at and if it's tilted, etc. And that's gonna let you scroll up and down pages. And the smart pause option is gonna pause a video if you look away. So it's quite interesting, but quite gimmicky as well, some may find. You've got air view and air gesture, which are quite useful. You can hover your finger over certain areas and get previews. And air gesture allows you to do things like answer your phone without actually touching it just by waving your hand over the device. One underrated feature which I really like on the Samsung Galaxy S4 is the LED notifications. Now a lot of people overlook these, but this is really good for looking at the device at a glance. And say for instance, the green flashing light will mean that I've got a Facebook message. The white flashing light will let me know that I've got a WhatsApp message. Or the blue flashing light will mean that I've got a missed call or a text. So this is really nice to just view the device at a glance without actually having to physically unlock it or press the power button. And I did find myself missing this while I was using the iPhone 5S for review. The Samsung Galaxy S4 also can be used with gloves, which is really nice, especially if you're from a cold country. Some of the features that I did like on the iPhone 5S, using the volume button as the shutter for the camera, that was quite nice, so at least you've got a physical button there. And I also like the fact that the iPhone 5S has the speakers at the bottom rather than at the back as with the S4, so I did think it sounded a little bit better. Neither of these are as good as the HTC One with the front-facing dual speakers, but the iPhone 5S I did find was a little bit better than the Samsung Galaxy S4. Now batteries, the Samsung Galaxy S4 has a 2600 milliamp battery, whereas the iPhone 5S has a 1560 milliamp battery. The S4 battery is removable, so you can replace it or carry around a spare. Now, although the S4 battery is quite a bit larger, the S4 is pushing out that many more pixels and it does have a larger screen. So I found that they had similarish usage throughout the day, but overall I'd say that the S4 does have slightly better battery life and lasted roughly about 10% more. Now price, the S4, you can pick up the 16 gigabyte version for 400 pounds 
or $600 in the US. The iPhone 5S, the 16 gigabyte version, the comparable model, £549 or $649. Now the reason why I've got this here is to highlight the difference in price. I'm not going to go into contract details and different contract prices, but this is just to give you an idea of the differences in value. The Samsung Galaxy S4 coming in quite a bit cheaper than the iPhone 5S, so if you are on a bit of a budget, that's something to consider. So there we have it, the iPhone 5S versus the Samsung Galaxy S4, both boasting some of the best features out there at the moment. At the end of it, I do think it comes down to personal preference. Do you prefer the more compact size, the premium build, and the simplicity of iOS on the iPhone 5S? Or do you like the larger full HD screen with the bunch of Samsung features, as well as the customizability of Android on the Samsung Galaxy S4? Well, what do you think? Which one would you go for? Do drop me a comment below and let me know your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, as always, please do hit that thumbs up button for me. It really does help me out. And why not subscribe to the channel? I've got plenty more content coming up on here. Thanks for watching. This is Saf on Super Saf TV, and I'll see you next time. If you want to see more regular videos like this one, then be sure to hit the subscribe button, which will be below. If you're on a mobile device, it may be somewhere else. If you want to see my previous related video, then hit the link right here. If you want to stay in touch over Facebook, Twitter, and Google+, then all of the addresses will be there somewhere, as well as direct links in the description below. Okay, if you're still watching, then that means you've not done one of those things, so... No. Yeah. Anyway, um, I'm just I'm just gonna go um, downstairs. See. Okay. Um, th there isn't really a downstairs. Anyway. Uh, so yeah.